اسمي العلي من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dear viewers, السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another session together where we are exploring the beautiful dua that begins with اللهم أدخل على أهل القبور السرور uh, Dua that is recommended for us to recite daily and in fact after our daily prayers in the holy month of Ramadan. Um, inshallah, in this session, we will be looking at the second line of the dua entitled, all that goes, Allahumma aghni kulla faqir. As mentioned, if you've not seen thus far that all of the, uh, uh, all of the um, uh, descriptions that we're going through and the depth that we're looking at um, on this dua is coming from this incredible book entitled Manifestations of the All Merciful by Sheikh Khalfan. So if you would like to uh, check it out, you're more than welcome and you can read ahead and go into more detail. Um, I'm simply summarizing uh, some of the amazing points that he mentions. Um, so inshallah, this will be uh, our, our, our session on Allahumma alkhani kulla faqir, which translates to, O oh Allah, enrich every poor one. Now, when we see this line, it seems pretty clear. I don't think it, you know, on the surface level needs needs a genius to work it out. Allah enrich every poor person. Okay, so anyone who is poor, the guy that maybe I see when I'm walking from the station to my office in central London, I'm like, okay, yeah, he, he's sleeping on the street. He is what I define as poor. You know, when I do this, I'm thinking, yeah, may Allah give him some extra wealth, some money, you know, so he can look after each other. It doesn't seem particularly challenging to the mind and this is the whole goal of these sessions i think this is the goal of sheikh al-fan's book which is for us to be able to actually dig deeper into this and say okay fine that translation's there given that outward meaning is there given but there's probably something a bit more depthful that we can realize and actualize when we analyze this um, and inshallah that's what we're going to dig into today so let's let's dive in a bit deeper my first question is when we say the poor person in this verse, what is the definition of poor? Like, who is poor? I've given my simplistic definition as the guy who, or the people that I see when I uh, am going from, from the station to the office in, in central London, and I see many people, unfortunately, nowadays who, who are on the streets, and not even central London now, it's even further across, but that's, you know, in my simplistic mindset, someone that comes across to me as poor, and therefore I'm praying for them. But of course, there's a deeper meaning. So I'm asking you, what do you think this definition of poor could actually be? Who could poor encompass? And to answer this, we'll look to the Holy Quran, Surah number 35, ayah number 15. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya ayyuhal nas, antumul fuqara, antumul fuqara o ila Allah, wallahu, wallahu, huwa al-ghaniyul hamid. O human beings, you are needy to Allah. And it is Allah who is affluent, the praised one. Oh, maybe poor includes me. <laughs> so whilst I have this, alhamdulillah, lovely house and garden and furniture and this and that, whilst I probably wouldn't describe myself as poor, Actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it very clear. Ya ayyuhan nas. Not specific types of people. No, no, no. Oh, human beings. All of you. No conditions. Ya ayyuhan nas. Whether you are a believer or a non-believer. Antumul fuqara. You are needy to Allah. Okay, so then who's the rich one? If we're all poor, who's the rich one? Wallahu wal ghaniyul hamid. And it is Allah who is affluent, the praise one. Of course, the verse says, Antumul fuqara ilallah. You are needy to Allah, Allah alone. And Allah is the rich one. And every single one of us, regardless of our wealth, our status, our race, our creed, we all recognize and must recognize that we are dependent. We are dependent. 
and we are infinitely dependent upon antumul fuqara ila Allah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're all dependent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regardless of who we are evidence by what you can drop tomorrow morning and be buried and no one could have done anything to you no one you could have done nothing to yourself you're needy to Allah he is the rich he is the all powerful we're all poor and this source that we are dependent upon which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must therefore be independent and again we're coming back to a very uh, core principle belief of ours which is that if we are dependent on something then that thing we are dependent on must be completely independent and whose existence must be necessary and essential we're completely reliant on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we own nothing this chair this plant this laptop, this lamp, this camera, whatever, we are not enough of it. Ultimately, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thus, we are all poor. Thus, we are all needy. Thus, we are all in need of Allah's grace and mercy. We should never take it for granted. And we are actually fortunate that our Lord is that merciful and that bountiful that he doesn't forget about us. He is always continuously bestowing his grace upon his creation. Ya da'im al fadl ala al bariya. O one who continuously bestows grace on the creation. Part of that dua that we read regularly. And of course, we pray, or at least hopefully we do pray, to be continued to be bestowed with this grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that actually that we, can re- uh, that we can receive it. Because actually, we're poor. When we don't realize that it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from his grace and his blessings. Because they can be taken away at any given time. All of these ni'mah, all of these blessings we have can be taken away at any given time from us. We're completely dependent on him. Food can be no longer in that fridge as of tomorrow morning if Allah wills it. We're completely dependent. And this changes the way we think of Allah on the kulla faqir. It doesn't just mean it's a du'a for those outside. But actually maybe it's also a du'a for myself. And it's a du'a for me to recognise, actually, do I recognise that I am poor? That I am nothing without the rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or have I completely taken it for granted? Have I always thought, oh, the poor one is there, 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 because I have, I have, I have. Ask how many people have been in an affluent job and just a day later, there's nothing left. And they're struggling. And it's not just wealth, it's health. How many of us with this virus that's been going around, we know of people who just the very next day, that's it, off to hospital. On a ventilator, that health is their wealth. We're completely dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we pray that Allah continues to enrich us as the poor ones as well as those in his literal understanding that we see it as well. So that's a very important point for us to recognize and hope it changes the way and the dimension by which we see this line. And it's a reminder to ourselves to say, have I done my shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have I humbled myself to remember that all of this can be taken away within a blink of an eye because I'm completely dependent on him. And the moment I think I'm dependent on someone else or something else is when I need to recalibrate myself because it can happen. It can happen. But you have to recalibrate and let this be a line that helps you recalibrate. So that's slightly you know, new dimension that we can now see this line in. On a more, you know, uh, obvious translation of the of this line of the du'a, which is, you know, enrich all of the poor. From there, yes, there is actually something to derive from as well as a lesson to, to derive from, uh, from there as well. And alhamdulillah, in Shah Ramadan, we are not short of initiatives, um, for those who are in need and giving to the needy and the destitute. You know, there are many initiatives, be they locally or internationally, 
And alhamdulillah, long may they continue and long may they receive the blessings and guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the question becomes is, okay, if I'm giving to this cause, if I've you know been shown these um, or been, been explained through these descriptions of what's happening, that these families living here, here and here require extra uh, money to, to help them survive, then yeah, I, I want to react and I want to give. But that's that's good, but that's not the end of it. And the question is, how can I increase that level of my giving? How can I go to that extra point? And there's something quite quite deep here, which we can uh, take from this line of du'a. This du'a. And it, it resides actually within our motivation, our intention. So what do I mean? Let me give you an example. Right, so we've just we've just said, you know, yes, there are these initiatives, and I read this, and I'm like, okay, cool, maybe I should give. Cool, I give, and you know, cool, that 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 that's it. Maybe someone says, well done, whatever. I don't know, you know, so I, I don't know. I've just given. I'm prompted in that situation, if you like. Whereas, if we give this example, when I'm hungry, I'm hungry. I want to satisfy myself. I want to satiate myself. So I'm gonna go to the fridge, and I'm gonna go make myself a sandwich. I'm gonna, you know, make myself something to eat. I don't do it to seek some kind of reward or recognition for it. No, I'm just doing it because I'm really hungry and actually innately within me, I'm like, you know what, it's it's bad if I'm hungry. I should, you know, not bad, but at some point I need to look after myself and feed myself. So at that point, if I believe that's the right time, I have a yearning to go and satiate myself. So I go make myself a sandwich and no big deal. I'm not expecting anything else from it. It's normal. It's natural. It's part of who I am. It's part of me. Similarly, I should have this mindset when it comes to this charity. When I ask a lot to enrich the poor, I don't just see it as something else put to the side. No, I should do it with a mindset where I truly innately desire for it to be the case that every single person who is financially poor is no longer. That I innately want that. That I have a yearning for it. The same as I have a yearning to satiate myself. I also have a yearning to ensure that everyone has the right amount of money to sustain themselves. And you saw this within Imam Ali Alayhi Salam, the way that he governed. It was so important to him, incredibly important to him, that everyone had a good amount of income such that they could live in a decent manner. It meant so much to him. You know, we have narrations from so many of Ahlul Mita'alim and the way that they thought about charity, that it just seemed innate. They would go, forget the extra mile, the extra hundreds of thousands of miles. It was, it was important to them. They strived for it. For zero reward in the night, in the darkness. And it's a next step for me first than anyone else. But for us to learn and go, you know, what's that next step that I can take that uh, that, that that intention to. I feel actually it's my concern and my burden that I need to go and solve and ensure that those who are financially poor that I have looked after them. So to summarize this line of Allahumma aghni kulla faqir, we started with quite a different way of thinking about this star, a different dimension, which is that who is the poor? And we said, well, actually, as seen in Quran, that we are all, as creations of Allah, completely reliant upon Him. And He is ultimately independent, and He is a necessary existence for us. And actually, we are poor. And it reminds us of our state that we should be in, that we're completely dependent upon Him, and that anything that we have comes from Him, and anything can be taken away in a blink of an eye from Him. So we should seek our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His ni'mah and His blessings that He's given Onto us, and that we should never become fixated by something that we think is giving our sustenance, because in the background, actually, it's always Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So it's addressing us as those who are poor to recognize that we are dependent upon Him, and that we should never take it for granted. And the second thing that we mention is that with all of these amazing initiatives that happen in Shahar Ramadan, with giving charity to those who are in financial need, that actually we can take this giving that inshallah that we do, and that I highly encourage that we do, that we can take it to the next level, that we should feel it's actually our necessity, that we want to do it, that we have a yearning to do it, just like Ahlul Bayt alayhim 
did. The same way that we want to satiate ourselves when we get hungry and it's not questionable, there's no challenge to it, no one is able to take you off that task of you saying, I'm hungry and I want to eat. Of course, unless you're fasting and decreed by Allah in those certain hours. But in that time, no one's getting in my way, I'm going to go eat. There's no question. The same way we should have that same yearning and that same flame to go out and to ensure, just like Imam Ali alayhi salam did, that everyone is able from a financial perspective as well. It's difficult, but we should try and graduate ourselves in that mindset again so that when we are saying this to us, it's not just the lip service, but actually it's coming from within and it's something that we truly believe in. So that is the conclusion of this part of the dua. Allahumma aghni kull faqir ilahi ameen. And inshallah you'll be able to join us for the next line of this dua. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Oh.